Today we're going to talk about Peru, where I'm from. My name is Jenny. Um, Peru is located in South America. It shares borders with Ecuador, Colombia, Brazil, Bolivia, and Chile. And I'm going to show you a picture of it. Um, in Peru, the main language is Spanish, and the capital is Lima. Spectacular and diverse are two words usually uh, referred to Peru. Um, Peru is divided into three main regions, the desert coast, the highlands, and the rainforest. The, in Peru, the seasons are the opposite that, um, like uh, here in the United States, for instance, the summer goes from December till February, and the winter goes from June till August. Um, the weather in the coast, the weather is very sunny and humid. In the northern parts, um, in the northern part of Peru, the weather is very sunny and warm. Um, the the most beautiful beaches in Peru are located there. And then in the highlands, there are two seasons: the dry season, which is very cold and sunny, and the rainy season, that of course rains a lot. And the temperatures in the highlands um, are very dramatic. It, goes for, it may go for 74 degrees at noon to 23 degrees at night. In the rainforest, the weather is very humid and very warm as well. The nature, because it has so many different ecosystems, Peru is home to a wider variety of animals and plants. A 250 plot acre of rainforest is home to more than 6,000 different kinds of plants. Um, one plant that grows in the Andes is called the Puya Raimondi, uh, which is the tallest plant in, on Earth, and it can reach up to 30 feet. And what, what is funny about this plant is that um, it takes up to 100 years for it to bloom, and once it blooms, it dies. Um, our national flower is called Cantuta, which is, um, it reaches a 10 feet high, and it produces a long trumpet um, flower that attracts hummingbirds. Regarding the wildlife, um, in the jungle lives the biggest uh, wildcat in America, which is the jaguar which from the tip of their noses until the tip of their toes, their tails, I'm sorry, um, it can reach up to nine feet. Mm, there are also llamas, vicuñas, and, um, which is our national animal. And um, vicuñas wool is very expensive. It can, a uh, jacket can cost up to $21,000. Um, our national bird is the gallito de las rocas that has beautiful orange and red feathers, and it can be found at, at altitudes of 9,000 feet. Our archeological treasures are Machu Picchu, of course, and um, it is considered one of the new seven wonders of the world. Um, it was built in the mid 15th century by the Incas. Um, these days, it, ha it receives thousands of visitors each day. We also have the Nazca Lines, um, which were built by the Nazca Civilization. Um, they, are, uh, they consist of lines and drawings of spider, a monkey, and birds, and a dolphin. The Nazcas created these um, uh, lines by removing dark stones to show the lighty sand underneath. Um, regarding the food, um, Peruvian cuisine varies depending on where you are. Um, in fact, um, in 2019, two Peruvian restaurants were recognized among the top 10 best restaurants in the world. Um, some of our representative dishes are the ceviche, which is made of fish and lime and um, onions. We also have the chicha morada, which, which is our um, famous drink that is made of purple corn. We also have the papa rellena, which is a mix of mashed potatoes, vegetables, and meat. 
um, desserts we have alfa jores and they are two round cookies filled with caramel caram with caramel which is called dulce de leche and today I sh I'm gonna show you a little bit about it and then some fun facts about Peru is that um, we have around about 4,000 types of potatoes, different sizes, colors, and shapes. Um, some scientists believe that in the rainforest there are um, Indian tribes that have ever never seen the outside world. Um, we have a rainbow mountain, uh, which is called Vinicuna, and is made up to 14 different, different colorful minerals. Um, Peru is also home of important authors, such as Mario Vargas Llosa, who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2010. Well, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. These, are, these were some facts about Peru. Hola, niños. I'm Miss Jerry, and I'm a children's librarian with the Chesapeake Public Library. And we have been celebrating Hispanic Heritage Week um, actually, it's a whole month. It started out being a week, but it is a whole month. And today we're going to uh, continue our trip to Peru with some stories. And um, I'm holding one of my favorite things here. And my problem is when I first got it, I wasn't sure if it was a llama or alpaca, because I remember something about alpaca but um, I think that might have been just the kind of wool it is. So I thought we better figure out how we can tell them apart. Now, a llama's ears are longer and they sort of come up like a spear. And um, the alpaca has shorter ears and kind of a more pushed in face a little bit. So it, and our llamas are much, much bigger than alpacas. They weigh about maybe 400 pounds, and an alpaca will top out at 150. So we're gonna try to figure out who we have visiting us here today. And I think in order to do that, I'm gonna have to move some of this fur. I don't know. I'm trying to show you. I don't know. Those look a bit longish to me. What do you think? I think by the looks of them that we have a llama. And I think I will call her Blanca. That means white in Spanish. This doll that belongs to me um, has a new outfit and her outfit comes from Peru. And you can notice that the Peruvian people do a lot of very fine stitching and weaving, and um, they like colors. This tablecloth is also from Peru, and you can see all the beautiful, intricate color patterns, stripes, uh, and colors. So uh, like many of our Latin American countries, um, they seem to be bursting with colors. They see, uh, put nature right back inside their textiles. Well, now this is a very tiny version of either a llama or an alpaca. What do you think? He's got a shorter face and kind of a pushed in nose. Maybe this little guy is the alpaca. What do you think? So what I'm going to do today is read Matt Cosgrove's Maka the Alpaca. Is that the way to say Maka? It's Maka, okay. I have Miss Jenny with me and when I finish reading Maka the Alpaca, She's going to read it in Spanish so that those of you out there who speak Spanish will be able to hear all about Maca the Alpaca. And um, 
Some of you who speak only English can begin to hear what it sounds like in Spanish. Okay, now. Our book today is Maca the Alpaca by Matt Cosgrove. Oh, that's a pretty border. This guy is called Maka. He's an alpaca. He loves splashing in puddles and gives the very best cuddles. Maka's days were carefree, filled with giggles and glee until drama happened. It's a llama. That guy is called Harmer. He's no charmer. He's tall, strong, and wooly, but also a bully. Harmer was mean, quite the worst you've ever seen. He took Maka's stuff and played very rough. I don't like it when people play rough. And it's not nice to take someone's stuff and not ask them, right? You puny pig squeak, I'm strong. You're weak, said Harmer. Maka said, no, you're wrong. I'm surprisingly strong. The pair made a bet and a challenge was set. I'll move this boulder, Harmer pushed with his shoulder. He huffed, <sighs> he puffed, and nudged till it finally budged. When Maka's turn came, he just used his brain. Oh, look, he's using a stick to make a leverage so he can move it and he doesn't have to huff and puff. He's using his brain all right. Hmm. Well, why don't you try to reach up this high? And so Harmer was reaching up, getting fruit off of a really tall tree. And Maka said, easily done using this. Harmer let out a hiss. Hmm. <laughs> Now that Llama was fuming, his nasty mind was zooming. Only let's have a race. Try and keep pace. First to the top is the best. Full stop. They're going to race up a tall mountain, and there are lots of tall mountains in Peru. They took off in a flash and began their mad dash and the steep mountainside, but then the rock started to slide. Uh-oh. Being nimble and light, Maka made it all right. As he leapt to the summit, he saw Harmer plummet. What does plummet mean? It means that he fell down, down, down. Some might call it karma, as that bully of a llama went crash, bang, and splat. And that, my friends, was that. Harmer said, plainly shaken, turns out I was mistaken, for you've proved it quite clearly. Size doesn't matter, really. Maka went up to the thug and gave him a great big, what do you think it's going to be that he gives him? Maka went up to the thug and gave him a great, big hug, you guessed. And that is the story of Maka the Alpaca. Well, if you like that book about Maka the Alpaca, you might like this one. It's called Alpacas with Maracas, and it's by the same author, Matt Crossgrove. So remember, Alpacas with Maracas.
Hola niños, hoy día vamos a leer el libro llamado Maca la alpaca. El nombre del autor es Matt Cosgrove. Este muchacho se llama Maca y es una alpaca. A él le gusta chapotear en los charcos y da los mejores abrazos del mundo. Los días de Maca transcurren sin cuidado. Son llenos de risas y mucha alegría. Hasta que un día llegó drama, una llama. Este amigo se llama Harmer. Es alto, fuerte y muy peludo. Pero también es muy molestoso. A Harmer le gusta ser muy malo. En verdad es el más malo que alguien haya visto alguna vez. Le agarra los juguetes de maca y juega muy fuertemente con ellos. Yo soy muy fuerte y tú eres muy débil, le dice ha Harmer a maca Y maca le dice, no, tú estás equivocado, yo soy sorprendentemente fuerte. El par ha hecho un trato. Entonces la empieza a mover, Harmer empieza a mover una piedra y la empuja con sus hombros y la empuja con su espalda hasta que finalmente la logra mover. Cuando le toca el turno a Maca, él solamente usa su cabeza y con un palo y una roquita puede hacer mover esa enorme roca gigante. Bueno, yo no creo que tú puedas llegar hasta lo alto de este árbol, le dice Harmer a Maca. Y Maca agarra una pequeña escalera y sube rápidamente y, a, y logra llegar a la cima del árbol. Harmer está muy molesto. En verdad está muy molesto y se le ocurre proponer una, un, otro trato para llegar hasta la cima de una montaña. Sin parar, le dice a la pequeña maca. Ellos empiezan a subir la montaña, pero de pronto pequeñas rocas comienzan a caer. Y sin pensarlo, Harmer cae hasta el fondo de la montaña. Algunos le pueden llamar karma, pero es que como era tan molestoso, se fue rodando y golpeándose hasta que cayó en el piso. Y eso, mis amigos, fue el final de Harmer. Y dice, resulta después de todo que yo estaba equivocado. Y claramente el tamaño no importa. Maca lo miró desolado y dijo, no te preocupes. Yo lo voy a solucionar con un fuerte abrazo. Festival of the Sun, written by Zhang Sun Zhou, illustrated by Sine Zhou. High up in the Andes Mountains, Yana lived in a small village close to Cusco. Soon, Cusco was to hold the Festival of the Sun. The people in the village were curious. Who would be the king of the festival this year? This year, Yana's father had been nominated for the king. Pablo shouted to the other children, Yana's dad is one of the nominees for the king of the festival of the sun. No way, he'll never get to be the king. Yana didn't say a word, but she was offended by the remark, but she kept silent. When school finished, she ran home. Mom welcomed her with a huge smile. Your dad will be king of the festival. Really? She jumped up and down. Oh, I knew he would be chosen. Then her mother said, I need you to do a chore for me, Yana. Take this grilled corn to Usko. 
He is shearing the alpacas. Yana was so excited, she ran. Yana's brother, Usko, was shearing a young alpaca. Usko, I have some corn for you. Is there anything I can do to help? You can help by staying still, said Usko to his sister. Yana felt grumpy. She grumbled to herself and ate some of the corn. Mom was sitting at her awana. Next to it were dyed alpaca threads. Soon the threads would be changed into cloth for warm clothing. Yana asked, Mom, can I help you? I want to learn how to weave. You'll learn when you are older, said Mom. Now go and play. Yana felt very grumpy. She stamped out of the house. Yana woke up her father who was taking an afternoon nap. Dad, I wanted to help Usko and Mom, but they don't need me. Can I help you get ready for the Festival of the Sun? Her father yawned. Ooh, it's okay. You can have fun instead. Then he went back to sleep. It was the day before the festival. Dad practiced what he needed to do as king of the festival. He said, Inca forever, and his voice shook. Dad, your voice is all wobbly, Yana told him. You should say it louder. Her father smiled at her. Honey, why don't you just go and play? It was the day of the Festival of the Sun. Cusco Square, Square was crowded with people. Yana's family followed the parade to the hill for the final ceremony. Yana's heart thumped at the thought of seeing her father as the festival king. Flags were stuck on the walls. Torches flamed when they were lit. There were long lines of soldiers a li and lines of ladies dancing. People were taking photos. Yana stood on her tiptoes to try to see her father. The sun rose and the king stood by the altar. He wore fine clothing and a golden crown. He really did look like the king of all the Incas. The king gave the offering for a good year of great harvest. Inca forever, he said. His voice was loud like a real king's. The king blessed all the people there. When dad saw Yana, he strode toward her. Yana felt shy. She looked down at her feet. Dad picked her up and spun her around. Yana, my own dear daughter. Yana's shyness turned into a smile. She felt like an Incan princess. Traditional music flowed in the marketplace and people danced joyfully to cheerful rhythms. Every year is revived in this Incan way. Even when Yana is a grandmother, the Festival of the Sun will continue. <laughs>